Welcome to mineral videos. We begin by looking at the mineral calcite and this is the first of two separate videos about this very common but actually very interesting mineral. Calcite has the chemical composition calcium carbonate which corresponds to the chemical formula CaCO3. Now the chemical composition of calcite is shared by a couple of other minerals, aragonite and also by the much rarer vaterite. Now these three minerals are said to be polymorphous which means that they have the same chemical composition so that means they share the calcium and the carbonate groups but they actually have very different crystal structures which means that these different groups are arranged differently within the crystal of each mineral. Perhaps surprisingly the use of the word calcite is relatively recent. It only really caught on in about the 1830s. Before that the mineral was usually called either calcareous spar or calc spar. Now the interesting thing about these names is that their root lies in Latin a uh, word calx which refers to lime and it, it was used because the Romans used to use calcite uh, in lime uh, which they then went on to using concrete and cement. Calcite is actually one of the most common minerals uh, possibly almost on par with quartz and the silicates it is a major constituent of limestones uh, which are sedimentary rocks. As such calcite and limestones uh, are some of the most important rock forming minerals. Uh, limestone typically forms in the sea when the calcium carbonate skeletons of various marine organisms such as foraminifera or bivalves, so things like uh, mussels and snails uh, drop to the bottom of the sea and are compressed over time and solidify into limestone. Uh, pure calcite rocks have are actually very rare because normally some magnesium is also uh, nearly always present. So the rocks formed are actually dolomitic limestones. Some of the most uh, interesting and often spectacular surface exposures of uh, limestones are the so-called uh, limestone pavements and particularly good examples of these are found in Yorkshire. Now the form these take are big blocks of um, limestone called clints divided by uh, deep grooves called grikes where the limestone has been eroded. When limestone gets buried by a lot of material above and becomes compressed and particularly when it's heated it converts into a metamorphic rock called marble. Now marble can be a very beautiful rock, it's very hard and therefore for many years it's been used in architecture but also for making statues. Uh, so the Romans and Greeks um, were very prolific makers of statues uh, of their gods from uh, marble. More recently a really good example of a marble statue is the statue of David in Florence uh, created by Michelangelo in the 16th century. Although much rarer, calcite can also occur in igneous rocks uh, which are produced by volcanic or mantle processes. A couple of examples uh, of these types of rocks are carbonatites and kimberlites. Now carbonatites are igneous uh, intrusive rocks and they're mostly defined by the fact that more than 50% of their composition is carbonate minerals. Uh, they usually occur as uh, plugs within uh, zoned alkalitic intrusive complexes or dikes and sills. Um, nearly all carbonatites are intrusive because carbonate lava flows are unstable uh, and react quickly in the atmosphere so they don't last very long uh, on the surface uh, of the earth. Only one carbonatite volcano is known to have erupted in modern times and that is the Oldonio Lengai in Tanzania. The interesting thing about the eruptions from this volcano is that the temperature of the lavas is very low, much lower than silicate lavas, in the region of about five to 600 degrees Celsius. And the majority of the lavas are composed of sodium carbonate, 
but also with the presence of calcium carbonate and other uh, types of alkali uh, minerals. Although Aldonio Lengai is the only present day example of a live carbonatite volcano, there are plenty of other areas around the world with ancient lava flows made of carbonatite materials and other alkali complexes, including Gem Park and Iron Hill, Colorado, the Palabora complex in South Africa, Kovdo in Russia, uh, Mount Weld in Australia and the Fen complex in Norway. Because of the complex chemistry of these alkali lavas, uh, many contain dozens of uh, rare species. Uh, particularly good examples are the Pal Palabora complex in South Africa and also Kovdor in Russia. Uh, in addition, many also contain economic quantities of rare earth elements and also others uh, like thorium, uranium, tantalum and zirconium. Now one important feature of all these different types of carbonate rock like limestone or marble or carbonatite is that they're all very slightly soluble in water, especially if the water is slightly acidic. This means that over time the vast majority of these types of rocks tend to be er eroded away uh, simply by being washed away by rainwater. This type of uh, gradual erosion over time has produced many very interesting landscapes. Probably the most well known are the karst landscapes such as those found along the Adriatic coast in Croatia. A problem arises though when these types of rocks are used for building materials because again they're very gradually washed away, particularly in cities where the rain tends to be uh, acidic and therefore over time uh, a lot of buildings uh, become damaged through uh, this process. Uh, a good example of this is the Statue of David which we uh, touched upon earlier. Um, because of this type of erosion, uh, the original has actually now been placed in a museum and what stands outside the um, Palazzo di Signoria uh, is actually a copy. Similarly, when limestone dissolves away, it leaves behind holes underground and these eventually turn into caves. There are numerous examples of vast cave systems around the world, including the Voronya uh, cave in Abkhazia, uh, in Georgia which at 2100 meters is the deepest known cave uh, in the world. Now all that dissolved calcium carbonate has to go somewhere. Uh, very often it's deposited elsewhere particularly if the water cools uh, and the calcium carbonate comes out of solution. Uh, sometimes in caves this happens as uh, stalactite and stalagmites uh, but often this also happens outdoors as spectacular calcite formations. Everyone has their favourites, but my favourite three are the Hueva El Agua in Oaxaca State, Mexico, Pamukele in Turkey and the Mammoth Hot Springs in Yellowstone in Wyoming. Uh, the Hueva El Agua formation consists of two uh, waterfall-like formations and cliffs 50 metres high. Uh, the largest of the pair is 30 meters high and is called the Cascada Chica. Water oversaturated in calcium carbonate bubbles up in a number of springs above the cliffs and then pours over the side. Uh, as the water evaporates and cools it leaves behind um, the, the calcite load and results in these absolutely amazing formations. Uh, incidentally the name Hirval Agua means water that boils and that refers to the bubbling like uh, nature of the springs uh, above. The slopes of uh, Pamukkala, Turkey are far less steep so the water flows down gently and very slowly uh, and over time it has formed hundreds of spectacular pools on the sides of the mountain. Uh, the name uh, means cotton castles and really it's not hard to see uh, why that is. The Mammoth Springs formations are actually quite similar to those of Pamukkala but the difference is their range of different colours due to the various impurities contained in the calcite and brought up to the surface by the hot spring. The process of calcification is actually surprisingly rapid. Um, there are a few places in the world where the concentration of calcium carbonate is in water is so high 
that people have suspended items in the water, particularly if it's flowing over the edge of a waterfall, and over a period of about a year these things get completely covered in a thick crust of uh, calcite. One example of this is the Mother Shipton's cave in uh, Knaresborough where there is a, um, a waterfall that people call locally the Petrified Well uh, and there is a similar one in Derbyshire as well. This brings us to the end of our first video about calcite. Uh, in the next part we look at the structure, properties and different forms of this remarkable mineral.